the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Bobby Disco and Catherine Beaumont in Peter Pan with John Carradine. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight I want you to go with me to Never Never Land. Because we're going to tell you one of the most enchanting stories of all time. Peter Pan. Peter Pan was created by the great playwright, James M. Barry. It was our own Walt Disney who brought Peter and his charming little friends to the screen for everyone to enjoy. And as our stars from the original cast, we have those two talented youngsters, Bobby Bisco and Catherine Beaumont. We also will present John Carradine, a fine actor, whom I had the pleasure of directing in one of his first pictures. Now, Peter Pan, starring Bobby Driscoll as Peter and Catherine Beaumont as Wendy, with John Carradine as Captain Hook. happened before, it will happen again. But this time it happened in London, on a quiet street in Bloomsbury. Peter Pan chose this particular home because there are children here who believe in him. There's Wendy, the eldest, and John in the middle, and Michael, the little. For the boys, Peter Pan is the hero of all their nursery games, while Wendy not only believes in Peter, but is the supreme authority on all his marvelous adventures. Now, anyone who believes in Peter Pan also believes in his arch enemy, the notorious, cowardly pirate, Captain Hook. Captain Hook, you know, is very aptly named. A crocodile once devoured his hand, and in its place he wears an iron hook where his right hand used to be. Uh, uh, pardon me. Not his right hand, sir. His left hand. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, to be sure. Her left hand. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> not at all. Anyway, the boys, John and Michael, like nothing better than to play at being Peter Pan and Captain Hook. For example, just listen to them. Cross <laughs> <laughs> you, Peter Pan. <laughs> it's that and that. You'll never leave my ship alive. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, Peter Pan. Uh, Peter Pan? You don't say. 
Good gracious, whatever shall we do? But yet. Sound the alarm. Call Scotland Yard. Oh, Mary, of all the impossible fiddle panel, Peter Pan in. Now, had Mr. Darling turned to look, he would have seen two visitors there in the moonlight, high on the roof. One of them looks very much like a boy. It is only that, though, since he is a boy. None other than Peter Pan. But he'd have had to look more closely to see his companion. A very tiny companion, no larger than, well, the Gaffina. For she's a pixie. A very pretty, saucy little pixie. Her name is Tinkerbell. Now, Tinkerbell never talks, never says a word. She has a special language, all her own. And it sounds something like this. But I told you, Tink. We had to fly down here to find my shadow. And just as soon as we find it, we'll fly back to Never Never Land. Well, there's the window. You ready? Here we go. All right, Tink. Now search the room. You look there, and I'll look over here. Just help me find my shadow. It was Tinkerbell who found it, lying in the top drawer of the dresser, just where Wendy had left it. Well, all I have to do now is throw my shadow back on. Then we can go to... Girl, you're supposed to be asleep. But you woke me up. And you found your shadow. Oh, I do hope it isn't rumpled. You know, Peter, you look exactly the way I thought you would. Oh, a little taller, perhaps. But then, oh, Peter, what in the world are you trying to do? Well, I'm putting my shadow on, of course. With soap? <laughs> you can't stick a shadow on with soap. It needs to be thrown on with needle and thread. You sure? Uh, well, no, but I think so. Now, I'll find my sewing gears and stitch it on in no time. Of course, I knew it was your shadow the minute I saw it. And I said to myself, I said, I'll put it away for Peter Pan until he comes back. Oh, he's sure to come back, I said. And you did, didn't you, Peter? Oh. But what I don't understand is, it, Peter, how can I sew your shadow on if you keep flying around the room? Girls talk too much. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my name is Wendy. Wendy, Laura, and... Wendy's enough. Oh. Now, how did Nanny get your shadow in the first place? She jumped at me the other night. Over there at the windowsill. But what were you doing on the windowsill? I came to listen to your stories, of course. My stories? Oh, they're all about you. That's why I like them. I count the lost boys. The lost boys? Oh, I remember. They're your helpers. Oh, I'm so glad you came back. I might never have seen you. Why not? Oh, because I have to grow up starting tomorrow. Grow up? But that means no more stories. Not even one. No, I won't have it. Come on. Come on? But where? Back where I come from. Never, never land. Never, never land. You'll never grow up there. Oh, Peter, it would be so wonderful. I... Oh, but what would Mother say? Mother? What's Mother? I you don't know what Mother is. Oh, mother's someone who, who loves you and cares for you and tells you stories. Good. And... Now come on to the window. And when I tell you, no, please no, don't. No, no, just a minute. I, I have to pack some clothes and even milk and... Oh, I'm so happy. I, I think I'll give you a kiss. Be quiet, Tinkerbell. What's a kiss? Well, a, a, a kiss is... Oh, just stand still, and I'll show you. Oh! Oh, what is it? It's in my hair! Oh! It's pulling my hair! Tink! Tink, now stop it. Oh, what in the world? Tinkerbell, I don't know what got into her. Well, all I was going to do was give you a... Oh. Oh, I see. She certainly got mad about something. Dear, yeah, we've wakened my brothers. Oh, can you pass? I'm Michael. And my name's John. How do you do? Oh, look, John, a firefly. Oh, no, Michael, not a firefly, a pixie. <laughs> she says you're a big, ugly girl. Amazing. Simply amazing. Well, come on, Wendy, let's go. Where are we going? You never, never land. Never, never land? Mm, Lou and Pete are taking us. Oh, but, but of course. Oh, I couldn't go without Michael and John. Captain Hook is in Never Let the Land, is he not? I should like very much to cross swords with the real buccaneer. Yeah, all so pirates, too. Well, all right. But you'll have to take orders. But, but how do we get to Netherland? How? Why, we fly, of course. Oh, but we can't fly. Of course you can. It's easy. All you do is... Is, uh... Gee, that's funny. What's the matter? Don't you know? Oh, sure. It's, it's just that I never thought about it before. Well, let's see. That's it. You think of a wonderful thought. Any happy little thoughts? Uh huh. Like toys at Christmas, sleigh bells, snow. Yep. Watch me now. Here I go. It's easier than pie. Oh, you can fly. You can fly. Uh, now you try. I'll think of a merry lagoon. Ah, oh, 
underneath a magic moon. I think I'm in a pirate's cave. I think I'll be an Indian bird. Now, everybody try. One, two, three. We can fly! We can fly! We can fly! This won't do. What's the matter with you? All it takes is faith and trust. Oh, and something I forgot. Dust. Dust? Yep, just a little bit of pixie dust. All right, Tink, get her some pixie dust. You should say not. Well, I say you shall. It's an order. Yes, Dad. Oh, I love you. Now, think of the happiest thing. It's the same as having wings. Let's all try it just once more. Look, we're rising off the floor. Oh, oh my. Oh, we can fly. We can fly. We can fly. Disappeared underneath the clouds, and the stars grew bigger and bigger. Where is it, Peter? Which direction now to Never Never Land? There it is, Wendy. The second start of the right and straight on till morning. in pretty good shape when people try to outdo each other in doing things for others. <laughs> if that sounds a little confused, uh, let me tell you what I mean. In Tokyo, two of the commanding general's honor guard platoons each adopted an orphanage. They sent work parties to repair roofs, walls, ceilings, windows, and floors to fix the plumbing and renew kitchen and heating facilities. Intense rivalry developed between the units as to which could do the most. Each platoon solicited money at its pay table. They bought bolts of cloth and had warm clothes made for their protégés. It's the kind of game, the kind of a rivalry that we like to hear about, because it's one in which everybody wins. And such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Peter Pan, starring Bobby Driscoll as Peter and Catherine Beaumont as Wendy, with John Carradine as Captain Hook and Bill Thompson as Smee. Tiger Lily. Tiger Lily? Captain? The Indian princess, the chief's daughter. 
She'll know where Peter Pan is hiding. But, but, but will she talk, Your Honor? Oh, a little persuasion might be in order. Now let me see. Boiling in oil. Delightful. <laughs> Keel hauling. Lovely, lovely. Or uh, marooning. Oh, you're a sly one, Captain. A sly is lie. Well, uh, thank you, Mrs. Lee. But marooning, sir, uh, begging your pardon, it ain't what I'd call exactly good form, sir. Good form, Mrs. Lee. Blast good form. Did Pan show good form when he did this to me, cutting off my left hand? Well, now, Captain, you better get a fair duel, you might say. Why don't you take my hand and talk it overboard to, to, to that crocodile? Boy, for the boy, sir. <laughs> He's been a childish friend. That cursed crocodile fancies the taste of me so well, he's followed me ship ever since, licking his chops for the rest of me. And he'd have had you by now, Captain, if he hadn't swallowed that alarm clock. But now when he's about, he warns you, you might say with his tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. Do it, Mr. C. Enough of that infernal foul. But, but, but that ain't me, sir. I ain't talking to Chris. Oh, oh, no, no. Down, down there, look. There in the water. Now see if he ain't found you again. He's looking right at you, Captain. Top eyed with anticipation, as the poet says. Save me, Mr. C. Oh, don't let him get me. Don't let him get me. Here yeah, now. Shame on you. Upsetting the poor Captain. There'll be no end out today. Now, shoot. Come on. Shoot. He's backing off, sir. Nothing to fret about. I can't stand it any longer. I can't, I tell you. I can't. Well, now, that being the case, sir, why don't we leave Never Never Land? We ought to be tending to business, Captain. Like sinking ships and clipping gullets. I've told you a hundred times. We don't lift anchor till that wretched Peter Pan hangs from the yard off. Captain, look. It's him. It's Peter Pan. Peter Pan, oh! Again, sir. Flying, that is. Under me eyes. It is Pat. Headed this way with some more of those curvy plats. Three of them, sir. Two boys and a girl. Look alive, you top. And the cannon. Oh, why, we'll get him this time, Mr. Smee. That we will, Your Honor. Oh, I've waited years for this. Not some bank holidays, either. We'll pot him up there like sitting ducks. Oh, what for? All right, my hearty. Range for the two. Range. Yes, high in the sky, flying over Never Never Land, Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, and the three children were coming to the end of their journey from London. Well, there it is. There's Never Never Land. Oh, Peter. We just as I've always dreamed it would be. And hey, look, John. Mammy Lagoon. My Joe. And over there, the Indian encampment. You know, see what? Captain, look in the pirate. Oh, wait. I think something just went by. Cannonball, watch out. Here comes another. Now, where's Tank? Quick, Tank. Take Wendy and the boys back to camp. I'll stay up here and draw a hook's fire. Goodbye, Peter. We'll see you later. Do be careful. Come on, Hook. Here I am. Try and hit me, you... You crackfish. 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 Wendy, Michael, and John following her, Tinkerbell, the pixie, drove off as fast as she could. Jealous of Wendy, this is her opportunity for revenge. She fly on ahead, summon the lost boys, tell them a terrible enemy is approaching, and, well, and leave the rest to them. But I'm happy to say that before anything unfortunate occurred, Peter Pan swooped down from the sky to Wendy's rescue. I don't know, Wendy, but I'll soon find out. A strange lot, aren't they? They look like boys, and they act like boys, but they all have tails. Well, of course they have tails. Now, there, for instance, is Fox Boy. He has the bushiest tail of a lot. Then there's Rabbit Boy, Gus Boy, the Bear Twins. Well, anyway, there they are. And what a bunch of blockheads you've turned out to be. I'll bring your mother to tell you stories. And this is what I find you doing to her. Oh, gosh. A Wendy bird. A terrible, fierce Wendy bird. Tank said that. And, and she told us that you said for us to, to bust her up. Oh, I see. All right, Tank, come here. You're charged with high treason. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty, huh? Very well. I hereby banish you from Neverland forever. Oh, no, Peter. Not forever. Well, for a week, then. Come on, Wendy, I'll show you the island. Oh, I see the mermaid's set. The mermaid's lagoon. Who oh, wants to see mermaids? Let's go hunting. Personally, I want to investigate the aborigines. Yeah, and the Indians, too. All right, boys. 
Well, I show Wendy the Mermaid Lagoon. You take John Michael and go and capture a few Indians. John, you can be the leader. I shall try to be worthy of my post, sir. Pretty well, men. Ford, march. John, Michael, and the Lost Boys were out searching for Indians. Peter Pan took Wendy to Mermaid Lagoon, and it was there, where the lagoon flows out to the river, and the river flows out to the sea, that Peter Pan suddenly saw a dreadful sight. Peter, what is it? Out there, out there on the river. Rainbow. Mr. Smee at the oars. Hey, hey, Captain Hook. Wendy, look. They've got Tiger Lily. Captain Hook has captured the Indian princess. Oh, poor Tiger Lily. They're heading for Skull Rock. Come on, Wendy. I've got a safe. Yes, Hook has captured the Indian princess. But what of the boy? What of Michael and John and the lost boys who also were trying to capture some Indians? Well, they found the Indians all right, only something went wrong. Much to that it made the Indians captured him. I don't like this for crossing your fingers. You'd better talk, my dear, for soon the tide will be coming in. The water will rise to the very roof of this cave, and then, alas, will be too late. <laughs> this is your last chance, Tiger Lily. Beware, Captain Hook. Beware of what you do. Hey, did you hear that? Who could it be? The cave is deserted. The easy spirit is one of any which spirit. Stand by the rope, Mr. Speed. I'll reach among the rocks. Evil spirit indeed. The voice, of course, was none other than Peter Pan. As soon as Captain Hook had clambered out of sight, Peter went into action. Now watch this, Wendy. Oh, do be careful, Peter. Where are you going? Nowhere. All I'm going to do is imitate Captain Hook's voice. I do it rather well, I think. Listen. Mr. Smee, can you hear me? Oh, Peter, that's wonderful. Uh, yes, Captain. A release the princess. Take her back to her people. Aye, aye, Captain. Release the princess and... But, 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 Captain. Fuck me, no, fuck, Mr. Smee. Aye, aye, sir. All right, Tiger Lily. Back to the rowboat, my lady. I told him all along you and me would never be trying to take a pan. And just what do you think you are doing, Mr. Smee? Just what you told me, Captain. Carrying out orders. Get her back on that rock, you blithering idiot. And tie up. Get her back there. Johnny, now we can make up his mind. Let her go, put her back, let her go. Oh, the man's a fool to go to sleep. Again, Wendy. By the time I'm through with me, he won't even know his own name. Mr. Smee! Just exactly what do you think you are doing? Uh, putting your back like you said, Captain. I said nothing of the sort. Oh, but look at the Captain. All right, I'm Take the princess back to her people, understand? Aye, aye, sir. And one thing more. When you return to the ship, tell the crew to help themselves to be very miserable. And me very dead. Captain, look out! Captain, look out! Ah, me 
flat. Imitate my voice, will you? Watch this, Wendy. Give it to him, Captain. Cleave him to the brisket. Draw your weapon, Pan. At last, we meet on even terms. Ah, but you've no room, Captain. You're at a disadvantage. I can stand or fly about, but you, one false step and you plunge into the sea. I'll get you, Pam. I'll skewer your liver at the tip of me. Ah! Captain, look. Murphy, just look at you. What a pity, Mr. Smee. Hanging from a rock with only his foot to keep him from falling. I'll get you for this, Pam, if it's the last thing I do. You pushed me off. That's what you did. Look at him, Wendy. A codfish hanging by a hook. I say, Captain, do you hear something? Why, bless me, we have a visitor. Captain, Captain, he's coming up below you. The crocodile, he's snapping at your bristles. No, no. Good afternoon, Mr. Crocodile. And do you like codfish? You do? Good. Save me, please, save me. Oh, this dreadful, cruel boy. I'm not going to push you off, but I can't save you either. You see, Captain, that rock you're hanging from is about to give way. Ah! Swim for it, Captain, swim. Coming after me! It's just me! It's just me! Oh, it was a sight to behold. Captain Hook swimming for his life and the hungry crocodile lunging after him through the boiling water, snapping and grinning hopefully. But reach his ship he did, scrambling up the anchor chain just as the crocodile's jaws crashed behind him. And from the shore came Peter Pan's taunting cry of victory. Peter was too busy to listen to the ravings of the frustrated pirate, for he and Wendy now were bringing the Indian princess back to her grateful father. What of Captain Hook? Had he learned his lesson at last? Well, if anyone thinks so, they simply don't know very much about Captain Hook. Oh, that boy. That wicked, wicked boy. <sighs> Making a fool of me again. Me, you bothering imbecile. Where's me mustard pot, sir? Where's the football? They're coming, sir, coming. And that's not all I'm bringing you, sir. I've got news from the island. Oh, dear me, uh, all those nasty gems. What news from the island? Well, just between us, Captain, there's trouble brewing. Woman trouble? Huh? Now, I wouldn't want this to go any further, but the cook told me that the first mate told him that he heard that Pan has gone and banished Tinkerbell. Let the delicious be. What do I care what the cook said to did you say Pan has baddest Tinkerbell? Aye, aye, Captain. Yes, he has. But why? Well, on account of Wendy, Captain. She tried to do her in, she did. She's terrible jealous. That is me. That is all oh, this wonderful news that showed me vapors. Why, a jealous female can be tricked into anything. All we have to do is convince Tinkerbell that we're either to help her, and the little wench will chart our course straight to Pan's hiding place. Mr. Smith, take the long boat and go ashore. Well, if it's all the same to you, Captain, I'll stay on board and play Quidditch with the cook. Never eat you, Smith. You'll find Tinkerbell and bring her to me, understand? Bring it to you? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, uh, bless you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Poor Tinkerbell. Banished by Peter Pan, alone, dejected, he's easily captured by Mr. Smith. And now, back on the pirate ship. And so, my dear Miss Bell, I have invited you aboard the ship to chat with a mutual friend, that dear lad, Peter Pan. <laughs> ah, Mr. Smith, what lovely news. What joy. What feeling. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Bell, I want to tell Peter, I want you to tell him that I bear him no ill feeling. Oh, Pan has his faults, to be sure. Uh, bringing that Wendy to the island, for instance. Dangerous business, that. Why, Dame Rumor has it that already she has come between you and Peter. What's this? Yes, Miss Bell. Ah, then it is true. Let this be a lesson to you, Mr. Smee. Ah, the way of a man with a maid, taking the best years of her life, and then casting her aside like, like an old glove. It's a bloom and shine, that's what it is. Ah, oh, but we mustn't judge Peter too harshly, my dear. It's that Wendy who's to blame. But there's no choice. We must save the lad from himself. A very good question, ma'am. But how, indeed? You see, when the anchor come tomorrow, we sail away. That's it, me. We'll shine high Wendy. Oh, bully, sir. Simply bully. 
take her to sea with us, with Wendy gone, Peter will soon forget this mad infatuation. Me, we must go ashore at once, surround Pan's home. Oh, but Captain, we don't know where Pan lives. Great Scott! He is a mind like a steel trap. Well, said, my dear, you can get one enters the tree, climbs down below the ground, and thence to a cave. Finger or a hook on Peter Pan. You us me, we found him at last. Listen to the little dear. She wants to go back to the island. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Bell, you'll be most helpful. But the only place you're going is, is in this planter. A pretty little prison for a pretty little pixie. Come along, Speed. Peter Pan's me prisoner this night, or I'm not Captain Hook. Oh, a pirate's life is a wonderful life, but over the sea. Give me a canoe with a buck, and here's the life of a pirate for me. Oh, the life of a pirate for me. Oh, the life of a pirate for me. Oh, the life of a pirate for me. Act three of the Hollywood Radio Theater will continue in just a few moments. Corporal Sam Adler of the 2nd Armored Division had an idea that he could put his talent to work for the betterment of German-American relations. His background included two college degrees in music, and he knew that there were many musicians in the Army. So he organized the 7th Army Symphony Orchestra. It was a spare time project that soon gained official notice, and the group made a total of 44 appearances in 43 days. New and difficult scores were learned almost overnight. German and American music was played at each concert. Everywhere the orchestra traveled, the audiences greeted it with amazement and wild applause. Here was a group, a cross-section of America, representing all races and creeds that brought together thousands of people on a common cultural and spiritual plane. There's no doubt that through the medium of music, Corporal Sam Adler made a substantial contribution to the improvement of German-American relations. Such acts as these by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. The curtain rises on Act Three of Peter Pan, starring Bobby Driscoll as Peter and Catherine Beaumont as Wendy with John Carradine as Captain Hook and Bill Thompson as Smee. Well, it's now late at night. On one side of the island of Never Never Land, Captain Hook, Mrs. Smee, and the pirates sneak stealthily ashore toward Hangman's Tree and Peter Pan's home. The children have just returned there from the Indian and Captain, and Wendy's having a little difficulty getting her younger brothers to go to sleep. Now, I don't want to have to tell you again. Take off the war piece and feathers and get ready for bed. Really, Wendy? There are times when you try my patience. Why? We Indian brave. Brave's no sleep. Oh, for days without sleep. But, boys, we're going home in the morning. Home? The idea is ridiculous. Oh, Wendy, we don't want to go home. Well, you can't stay. You need a mother. We all do. Aren't you our mother, Wendy? Why, Michael, of course not. Surely you haven't forgotten our real mother. Did she have silky ears and wear a fur coat? Oh, no, Michael. That was Nana the dog. I think I had a mother once. You did, Tommy? What was she like? I forget. I had a white rat. That's no mother. Now, if you'd all be quiet, I'd try to tell you what a mother is. <laughs> well, a mother, a real mother, is the most wonderful person in the world. She's the angel voice that bids you good night. Kisses your cheeks, whispers, sleep tight. Your mother and mine. Your mother and mine. The helping hand that guides me.
Meanwhile, Captain Hook and the pirate have reached the tree. And it's only fair to say that two or three of them, hearing Wendy's song, brush bitter tears from bloodshot eyes. through the tunnel, up the steps, and out the hollow trunk of Hangman's tree. And there, surrounding them, is Captain Hook and his wretched crew. Who's there with them, men? Take them back to my ship. And now, Mr. Smith, you take care of Master Pat. He's still down there, Captain. I heard him. The bomb, Mr. Smith. All I have to do now is lower this box containing the bomb down the hollow tree. There we are. Uh, uh, Captain, wouldn't it be more humane like just as quick and delicate? That it would, Mr. Smee. But I've given me word to think about not to lay a finger or a hook on Peter Pan. <laughs> and Captain Hook never breaks a promise. Come now, back to the ship. Oh, a pirate life is a wonderful life for all the sea. Give me a little the life of a pirate for me. Oh! And now, Mr. Smee, I shall interview the three young ones from Bloomsbury Street. You had him, you can't be fair. Don't get down, get this. Curtsy and deep. Never. Well, young masters and miss, you've heard me proposition. Either you join the crew or walk the pipe. Oh, no, we won't. Peter Pan will save us. Did you hear that, Mr. Smee? Pan will save us. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny. Then allow me to tell you, dear lady, I left a present for Pan, a sort of surprise package, you might say. Present? <laughs> package? To be sure. Why, I, I can see our little friend at this very moment, reading the tender inscription that I wrote upon the box. To Peter, with love from Wendy. Do not open until six o'clock. What time is it, Mr. Smee? <laughs> Twenty seconds from six, Your uh, Honor. Could he but see within the package, Miss Wendy, he would find an ingenious little device. So delicately set that when the hands of the clock reach six, Peter Pan will be blasted out of Never Never Land forever. A bomb? Oh, no. No. Fourteen seconds. Thirteen seconds. Well, here. Yes, Captain Hook's triumph is at hand. Is there nothing or no one remaining to thwart this evil man? Ah, but there is. Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell, the little pixie, unknown to Captain Hook. Tinkerbell has escaped, and she's flown from the ship swiftly to Peter Pan. Oh, hi, Tink. Hey, I thought I banished you. Take a look at this box. Wendy left it for me. Give it to you? Well, stop that. Let go of it. What's the matter with you? Bob, Captain Hook, don't be silly. How could Captain Hook... Look, it's smoking. It is a bomb. Stand back, Tick. I'll throw it out of the cave. <laughs> and so part of the worthy opponent, Mr. C, uh, kindly remove your hat. Amen. <laughs> and now, Miss Wendy and gentlemen, which will it be? The pen or the plant? Captain Hook. 
My brothers and I will never join your crew. As you wish. All right, you pills right. Off the punch they go. You may start, Miss Wendy. Ladies first, you know. Good, goodbye, boy. Goodbye, goodbye Wendy. Be, be brave, won't you? I shall strive to, Wendy. <laughs> Walked the plank, did she not? Straight to the end, and then she jumped. Then, where's the splash? A weapon and a no splash. Not a sound. Not a blooming ripple. Well, go to the rail and look. And no splash. Here we go. Well, look out, Captain. She didn't She didn't make no splash. So you want the splash, Mr. Toppy? I'll give you a scoop. <laughs> Who's next, you pack of nincompoop? Who else wants to hear a splash? You're next, Crook. This time you've gone too far. It's Felix. It's Felix. And Wendy. He saved Wendy. Captain, look. Him and the girl up in the rigging. He can't be. It's his drunken ghost what's talking. Say your prayers, Crook. Ghost indeed. I'll run him through for all of you to see. Peter moved down to the deck, sword in hand. First, he slashed the ropes that bound the lost boy together, and as they swarmed across the deck, passing the fire, Peter engaged the master fiend himself. Don't take it, Captain. For what you've done to Wendy and to her brother, to say nothing of the lost boys in Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell? She saved my life. That she is kicked. And she means more to me than anyone in the world. So take that, and that, and that. No, mere boy, I, I think she's a demon. Your steel will never touch me. You forget, Hook. I can fly. They're flying devil. They fly, Howard. Howard? Me? You wouldn't dare engage me man to man. You fly away like a cowardly sparrow. Nobody calls Tan a coward and live. I'll fight you man to man. And with one hand behind my back. Cross your heart, you won't fly. No, no. It's a trick. I give you my word, Hook. Then let's have a hit. Insolent youth, prepare to die. Die? No, never. I gave my word. Never. Before or since has mortal man seen such a duel. They fought on the deck, they battled in the rigging, and they parried on the yard. And then, pressing his opponent to the rail, Pan at long last touched his steel to the scrawny throat of Captain Hook. Yeah! Uh, you wouldn't, lad. You wouldn't do in old Hook now, would you? I told you before. Say your prayers. Uh, I'll go away forever. And don't look for help from your crew. They've already deserted you. They left this ship in the longboat. Oh, it's a sad day for piracy and crime. Sad, sad boy. I'll do anything you say. Well, all right then. I'll spare you on this one condition. If you say you're a codfish. Uh, I'm a codfish. Louder! I'm a codfish. <laughs> all right, Mark. You're free to go. And never return. You're right, you girl. I always had him with me iron hook. This is the end. I was a fool to trust you. And since you're a codfish, into the sea you go where you belong. The crocodile. No! Captain Hookie was still blowing, hotly pursued over the horizon by a very happy crocodile. Hook's ship now belongs to Peter Pan, and the very first command from Captain Pan is directed at Tinkerbell. Well, Tink, we're hoisting the anchor. I hereby order you to sprinkle this entire ship with pixie dust. We're flying down to London. <laughs> Exactly what happened. Full sail to the wind. The ship sped down the Milky Way and over London town. It left two boys and one girl safely in their home on Bloomsbury Street. When their parents returned and went up the stairs to make sure their children were asleep. I'm so glad you changed your mind about Wendy. After all, George, she still is a child. Oh, sure, Mary. No, I never mean no thing. Well, in the morning, we'll tell her she may... George! George, Wendy's not in her bed. Huh? Quickly, dear, turn off the lamp. Wendy? 
What on earth are you doing at the window? Asleep, dear? At the window? Oh, Mother, we're back. Back? Yes, Father, from Never Never Land. Never Never Land? Oh, yes, and but I am. Uh, am? Uh, ready to go up, Father. Oh, oh well, my dear, oh, in good time. After all, perhaps we were a little hasty. Oh, but it was such a wonderful adventure. Why, we were even kidnapped tonight. Kidnapped? Mm-hmm. And I knew Peter Pan would save us, and he did. And we all called him the Crosby. Huh? <laughs> oh, Captain Hook, I know. Oh. And then we sailed away on a ship in the sky. Hmm. Mary, I'm going to bed. Oh, Mother. He really is wonderful, isn't he? Look out the window. See how well he sails the ship. Now, dear, there's nothing out there in the sky except... George! George, look! Now what? There, against the moon. You know, Mary, I have the strangest feeling that I've seen that ship before. A long time ago, when I was a little boy. Yes, Wendy, dear. He really is wonderful. There's no better kind of star. Our stars will return. This is really a story about two people. One is Chief Petty Officer Harry Frame, a veteran Navy electrician who saw lots of action in the war in the Pacific. The other is Mrs. Sadaya Ishiwata of Tokyo. Mrs. Ishiwata turned her home and her fortune over to 53 boys and girls of all ages who were orphaned by World War II. And Chief Frame devoted his off-duty hours to helping this tiny Japanese lady. He organized his friends into work teams, and because of their work, the home took on a bright new look. New panes of glass were installed, a new girls' dormitory was built, and twice a week, a Navy truck rolled up with leftover food, writing paper, worn-out clothing, and other contributions from the men. Chief Frame made it his private project toward better relationships between people of two different countries. And it's paid off in mutual goodwill. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. And now, Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are, Peter Pan and Wendy. (laughs) I mean, Bobby Driscoll and Catherine Beaumont. And don't forget John Carradine, who played Captain Hunt. Mr. Carradine played my father, Mr. Darling. Of course, children. Mr. Carradine is very versatile, so we cast him as both Mr. Darling and Captain Hook. John, tell Bobby and Kathy about your one-man show. Yes. It's called A Carousel of Famous Roles. I do scenes from Hamlet and Macbeth, Julius Caesar. Oh, we certainly want to see the show, Mr. Carradine. You know, I want to study Shakespeare, even if the best roles do go to the men. Oh, what an enchanting voice Tinkerbell has. Oh, Mr. Carradine, listen to that. It's the crocodile after you again. No, Kathy, that's just merely watch. He's telling me it's time for us to leave. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And have a wonderful Christmas. Once again, the holiday season is here. And may it be a joyous Christmas for you. Knowing that at last our country is at peace, and may we continue to pray that the wonderful words spoken on the first Christmas day 2,000 years ago will prevail throughout the world, that they may truly be peace on earth, goodwill toward men. cast tonight were Bill Thompson as Mr. Smee, Herb Butterfield as the narrator, Christopher Cook as John, Richard Beals as Michael, Mary Flynn as Mrs. Darling, Billy Bletcher as the Indian Chief, Michael Miller as Cubby, Stuffy Singer as Foxy, Earl Keane as Nana, and Chet Lincoln and Eddie Marr as the Pirates.
by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. 